He's intrepid, but a tad bit forgetful. In the children's book, Remember 10 with Explorer Ben, professor of psychology, Dr. Tracy Alloway, through her research, she helps the author write about Explorer Ben, who sets off on a big adventure through the jungle, caves, and deserts on different methods of transportation. But the thing of it is, he keeps forgetting things along the way. Dr. Alloway's research helps children learn to remember through fun memory games and new memory tips. And she is joining us now, Dr. Alloway. It's so good to see you. Thanks Thank for you. being here. So the memory tips, the meat of the book, is really what you provided to the author. So why is it important to try to help children develop a memory early? I think it's so important because I can't even count the number of times I've had conversations with parents and as a parent myself, you know, where you say, I told him to get this from his room and he comes back and says, what am I supposed to do, mom? So just these simple everyday activities, we often see our children forgetting what they need to do or getting into the car, you're on your way to the school and they say, oh, mom, I left this at home. Can we turn around? And so really I wanted to be able to work with this author to, be, to create these fun memory tips that kids could learn on their own. Can you reach kids at such a young age? Can can you teach them to remember better, right? Or is this just a, a fruitless effort? Obviously not, you wrote in this book, but you know, it's like kids are gonna be kids, but to some extent you can teach them. Oh, absolutely, and I think that's what's so fun about this um, this book is, you know, I have a, a seven-year-old and he just loves this book, but he actually tries to use some of those memory tips himself. And so it's things like visualizing or things like creating a little map in your house for where you need to go. So you stand in your bedroom, you think, what do I need to get from here? You stand in your living room, what do I need to get from here? Here. So it's using those kinds of cues to help you remember that you can use in everyday life, not just in a little book activity like this. So the drawing of the room, that's one of the methods that you use to try to help kids what? Remember where things are in the room? Remember what? What are we going to learn out of? Because I saw that picture yes, in the Yes, yes. So imagine that you have to get ready for school and your mom says, all right, do you have everything you need? without any cues, so it's up to the child to think, okay, in the bedroom, what do I need to get? Is my backpack there? That's what I remember. In the living room, what do I need to get? Well, my shoes are there, that's what I need to get. So you use the room as this kind of external trigger, external cue to help you remember all those objects. And research shows that it's so much easier to remember those objects compared to if we're just standing in front of the door, standing in the car and thinking, Oh, I know I had to get all these things, but what were those things? So the room acts as a cue to help trigger that memory. What's another good tip in the waning minute or so that we have that parents can start to use with their kids to help them remember better? Create a song. And so one of the tips in there to help explore a band, remember, is that we put a little rhyme to Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. And so let's say you're trying to help them remember the al Well, we do that all the time with teaching, whether mm -hmm. it's the alphabet or word endings or multiplication tables. Putting something to music helps our brain encode and remember that information so much more. So if they have activities that you need them to do, maybe chores, a list of chores, and they keep forgetting what they need to do, put it to a song. And then you could kind of say, let's sing our song. What do you need to do for chores before you go to bed? So it's changing the words of a song <laughs> to try to then help them remember whatever they need to do. Not necessarily, because I know that there has been some research mm -hmm. about listening to music while right. studying, but this is actually changing the words. Like in the ABCs, you're actually learning the ABCs exactly. through song. Exactly, so Twinkle Twinkle, instead of singing Twinkle Twinkle, you're saying, First, I pick my clothes up, and I'm not going to sing on air, but, a, <laughs> but it works. But it does work. The kids will remember that because they know the melody, and then they it's far easier to remember the words than and what they need to do as a result. Okay, so you just got to think about what you want to put in that song, exactly. right? You yes. can have a lot of fun with that. <laughs> then they take the dishes out of the dishwasher, and then I help mom with the laundry. It could be wonderful. Exactly. Okay, where can we get a copy of this book, and what else do you think that parents are going to be able to retain? What age do you think is appropriate for kids? Yeah, it's on Amazon right now, so you can go on Amazon and get a copy. Um, this is meant for young kids, kids as young as five or six. Um, I went to London as actually speaking at a conference on, on learning difficulties. And one of the things I brought back was this book. And this was, you know, I brought other things back for my kids. And this is the one thing that he kept coming back to. And he really just enjoyed. So I, I love that this is such a great book for all ages. My 11 year old loves it too. We sit down and we do those memory tips together. And then we talk about how we can apply that to everyday life. So um, I hope that if you have kids in, in primary or grade age kids, that they would enjoy some of these tips in here too. Dr. Alloy, so good to see you. Thanks Thank you. for being here. And you can grab a copy of the new children's book, Remember 10 with Explorer Ben, on Amazon and anywhere major books are sold.